I just had a couple of minutes, so I wanted to walk over and see these guys. Yeah, absolutely. 136 turtles from U.S. Fish and Wildlife. They're all drinking, they're all eating, and they're all coming around, so everyone in this room is doing really well. We work very closely with federal and state agencies, and in this case, Fish and Wildlife contacted us and say they had made a confiscation. With most of these turtles, we'll work with other AZA zoos and aquariums to find them a good home. These animals are most likely coming into the country or being exported from the country as part of the pet trade. Typically, we don't get stuff like this. Typically, we get like hundreds of one kind of turtle. Exactly, and this has got a little bit of everything. Uh, some fairly common North American species as well as very uncommon Asian species. It's an albino Chinese soft shell? It is. <laughs> wow. There's a couple of things that really threaten turtle species in the wild, but mainly collection for food and the pet trade. People who export animals for the pet trade will collect every turtle they can see, basically vacuum them up from the environment so there's areas that are completely devoid of turtles to guarantee their survival. Zoos can breed them and return them back into the wild as long as that environment is protected. These black-breasted leaf turtles are always one of my favorites. People don't think turtles or reptiles have personalities, but these guys do. In the case of the black-breasted leaf turtle, we have a breeding program for them here, so we'll keep these individuals and incorporate them with ours. So this is one of our females from the confiscation. So although the confiscation is really unfortunate and you never want to see animals put in that position, we were able to get something positive out of it and have these leaf turtles and add them to our breeding group. These turtles are native to southern China. They're not as widely available. So when we get a confiscation, a lot of times we're expecting the usual suspects, which usually don't include leaf turtles. They are by far my favorite species of turtle. I just think that they're so unique and interesting. They're called leaf turtles because they look like leaves. Their camouflage is just so incredible. They'll kind of bury themselves under a piece of deadfall, and you'll walk right by that. They're really gregarious. They'll follow you around the room if they know it's feeding time. And they're also, like, they're kind of mean. <laughs> so they'll come after me sometimes. And this is a 120-gram turtle coming after me. Like, what are you going to do? Like, you're going you're gonna to scare me away. But they have no fear. They're just fantastic little guys. So this is our male. All these turtles have cleared quarantine and are healthy, and they're ready to join our reproductive group. So I'm going to pair up our bachelorette group of black-breasted leaf turtles with one of our males. Hopefully, these turtles will breed, and we will increase their numbers. The female here in the water dish just popped her head up. She's seeing who the new visitor is. The more shy female over here is being pretty wary. But they're both kind of staring at the male. And I just want to watch them and make sure that the male doesn't get overly aggressive or uh, really stress out the females. So this is pretty standard male interest in, in this species. So he's gone over to the female. His throat is, is doing that nice ghouler motion. And he's just kind of sitting there saying, hey, well, you know, what's going on? And there he goes. <laughs> and then he starts biting the back of her shell. The male is showing interest. You usually see an egg in three to six weeks. female leaf turtle has laid eggs in her enclosure, and now I'm checking on them to make sure they're still developing. These eggs were laid about a month ago. Uh, leaf turtles hatch anywhere from 60 to 90 days, so they're about halfway done. It's not uncommon for the first few clutches that a female lays to not be viable. Healthy eggs are going to have a nice white band where the embryo is attached, and then if you take a flashlight, you're going to be able to see significant red veins running through them. Oh, these, these look great. You can actually see the turtle over here. That little shadow there is probably his foot. There's some serious veining and blood spotting uh, visible within the egg, so I think they're still right on track.
Black-breasted leaf turtles are endangered in the wild. They're very rare. They're one of my favorite turtles. It's really exciting to have new hatchlings. I mean, they're just fantastic little turtles. They come out of the egg ready to go, uh, and they're, I mean, they're adorable. Checking to see if one of our leaf turtles has hatched. And he has. So he's broken like the first quarter of his shell open here, but he's a little bit wider than this area. So really, he needs another couple centimeters to comfortably break out. This happens about every fifth or so turtle. We'll just help him out. can't really get leverage on this like type of substrate. So in the wild, he'd find like a rock or something and help break himself out. And I'm just gonna slide him out. There he goes. So when they first hatch, the egg is very oblong and they fit the egg. He's very soft. And uh, over the next few days, He's gonna splay out and become much more circular. And then over the next few weeks, so it'll really harden up and get that classic turtle shell. We just try to wash some of this gunk off of him so I can get a good view of him, make sure he's got all his little fingers and toes. His eyes are open, he's looking around. He looks pretty robust, so I think, I think he's gonna be totally fine. I'm going to check on him a lot. It's really exciting. And of course, everybody I know is going to get pictures of him. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be, you know, it's always great. This is the best time of year, turtle hatching season. I usually name them based on uh, what's going on in my life. But I haven't done anything interesting this week. <laughs> so <laughs> I was talking about it with somebody yesterday when they came up with the name Leo, because uh, he was uh, born on film. So <laughs> we, might, we might name him Leonardo DiCaprio. What's really great about this is that these animals that were in an uncertain situation with an uncertain future, they found a permanent home here, and they're contributing to the sustainability of their species. 